Our second clutch of the year is finally shut out. I've been dying to share these pictures with you, but I also want to share how we almost lost one of these snakes and what we did to save it. Let's go down to the snake room. Family, quality, health, integrity, support after the sale. These are cornerstone beliefs at Interscript Reptiles. Come join our family. Hey guys, welcome back to Anders Grip Reptiles. I'm Wes and this is Zach filming. I promised you guys I'd show you the new clutch, so let's get started. This is the sire of the clutch here. This is a single gene asphalt. Looks a lot like a yellow belly. Don't know if you watched the last video that I made, but the yellow belly and asphalt are allelic. So when they combine on the same allele, you get an ax like super form, which makes the freeway. This is the mother of the clutch. She's a super pastel ivory. So super pastel, super yellow belly, two copies of pastel, two copies of yellow belly. But just a beautiful snake. She gets wider and wider every year. And as you can see, she's already put back on the weight from the clutch that she laid. Just a fantastic snake. Before I show you guys the clutch that just hatched, I'd like to show you a couple from last year also. This is a regular freeway here. So it just has asphalt and hilla belly in it. Gorgeous snake, love these snakes. One of the first snakes that got me really excited about ball pythons. And this is a female that we held back this past year for ourselves. I wanna show you what happens when we add pastel to the mix. So this one is just regular freeway and this is a pastel freeway. It is a dramatic change when you just add one gene to this morph. I don't know if I could share a video with you guys without showing you the paradox we made last year also. So this is a pastel freeway paradox. And I think she is stunning. Same thing as the last snake you looked at, except for she has paradoxin. So I promised you guys I'd show you the clutch you just shed out. So let's start with a pastel yellow belly. Now we know it's pastel and we know it's yellow belly because it came from a super pastel ivory. So all the babies have to have at least pastel and yellow belly in them. Just a beautiful little snake, nice flaming up the sides, good dark contrast in the back, some, some blushing across the dorsal. A very clean belly. Okay, this is the second pastel yellow belly. This one, as you can see, is quite a bit different. Look at the blushing here on the dorsal. Never seen one quite like that. Beautiful flames up the sides. This one also, very nice clean belly, blushing across the head. But this dorsal stripe is just spectacular for this little pastel yellow belly. And I thought I'd show you guys the pastel freeways all at one time. Each of these, quite a difference in the, in the patterning on them and the amount uh, of black, how heavy the black is, the contrast. Each snake is, is uh, each snake is quite a bit different. Let's see if I can stretch this first one out for you. Beautiful, beautiful snake. I love hatching these out. The second one, as you can see, this one, the, the whites are brighter, a little bit more speckling on the side at the bottom. Uh, the blacks are a little more uh, faded, almost more like, like a hypo. The wider pastel blushing across the head on this one. And then this one, this last one, is even a little more yellow. As you can see, each of them is quite a bit different, but look at the head stamp on this one and how heavy and dark the black is in the beginning on the top of this pattern here. Absolutely stunning. And even the blushing here 
in the middle of this black saddle. It's just gorgeous. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Can you do me three favors? Can you hit the subscribe button, the like button, and then down in the comments, if you would, tell me what's your favorite freeway more and what gene would you like to see us add to our freeway projects? I promised you guys I would tell you about the snake that almost died on us. So the third snake that crawled out of the egg still had a giant yolk sac and it was tangled up in the umbilical cord. I was able to push the snake back through it. What I did was I took one of these fabric out cups. These are the same things we use in our tubs for water. So what I did was put a little bit of water in the bottom of this and then I used press and seal, pulled it as tight as I could over here and then I punched holes in there and actually turned the blade of the knife to make sure they were open and wouldn't heal back over. And then I took this and put it back in the egg tub and left it in the incubator. So all the temperatures would stay the same. It would be in the humid environment and then inside like a microclimate that was also humid and had moisture in the bottom. The reason I put moisture in the bottom is because if you don't and the yolk were to dry out, it could stick to the bottom of the cup. And as a snake tries to crawl or move, it would pull that yolk sac and what it's attached to out of its body. So we keep it nice and wet on the bottom so it'll stay slick and reduce friction. Last year I had the same thing to happen and I used a small glass bowl and I used regular saran wrap and a rubber band and I just did the same idea. I made it tight, I punched holes in the top of it to make sure you could breathe, put it back in the incubator. I took this first picture in the morning and I took the next two pictures in the afternoon. So we're looking at a time span of approximately eight hours. Can you guys believe he absorbed that much yolk in that short of a time span? It was incredible to see happen. And that was one of the three pastel freeways that you saw today. And he's 100% healthy now. Hope this helps you guys out and saves one of your snakes' lives. Hey, thanks again for watching, guys, and welcome to the IHG family. Have a great day.